Welcome to the Library of Alexandria. I'm delighted to be here with you. And uh, the first uh, invitation came from uh, my friend and colleague, Huda al mikati And uh, I am delighted to see that her team has done a fantastic job here, in spite of the fact that she had to be uh, somewhere else because of uh, urgent uh, situation. And uh, because of this, I would like to dedicate my lecture to Huda al and her team here at the Library of Alexandria and the Planetarium Science Center. I will try to stick to the two topics that were just conveyed to you now, meaning that I will speak about the Moon and Mars. And why is that? Because these are really the two planetary bodies that are closest to the Earth. And from the viewpoint of a geologist, these are the bodies that we can learn from them something that relates back to the Earth. We learned a great deal through the Apollo program. And one thing that we learned through the Apollo program that we have not really talked about or applied in our practical ways of doing things in different countries is to think about what the Apollo program did and why was it so successful. The Apollo program was such an incredible program and its success perhaps is compared to the building of the first pyramid, that's the step pyramid of uh, Djoser in, in Saqqara, that's Imhotep, defined, visualized, organized, and built. And from these kinds of human endeavors and accomplishments, we should think, why, would, why was Apollo such an incredibly successful project? And I believe it's because it was a project that had a very clear objective that all people could understand. To go to the moon, to send a man to the moon, and return him safely to the earth. A very specific objective that everybody could understand. And it also had a very specific time frame within this decade, meaning 10 years. You'll do this in 10 years. So the American government decided that this is what we're going to do. And we will put together the group or the team that can accomplish this within this time frame, and we will supply them with the budgets that they require. And therefore, all kinds of things came about, and the technologies and the understanding and the studies and, and the research and so on that so continued because everybody that was related to it knew that there was a very specific objective and a timeline. Everybody knew there was the beginning and the end. And this, if you think to apply this kind of thing in your own life, you'll find that you can succeed because you know it and you know what it is and you know exactly how to reach there or to define the things that you want to reach there and then uh, put, your, put a specific time frame for yourself and you uh, accomplish it and you will see that this is the best possible way of doing anything on a global scale, on a national scale, on a, on a tribe scale or on a personal scale. So this is really, I believe that this for all humanity, I think that is the best lesson that the Apollo program has given us. However, from my view as a scientist, we learned a great deal about the moon. One of the most significant things that we learned about the moon is that it was born at the same instant of time as the earth. For certain, we know that the moon and the earth originated in, the first, in, the, in, in an instant in time which was roughly about 4.6 billion years ago, 